Joining me now is political commentator Connor Tomlinson. So, uh, Connor, welcome. Do you think that uh, this reaction was Evening. inevitable from the government? Well, I think much like your panellists, Nana, I was more concerned about the government's incompetent response than a brand new variant. Uh, there was something that spoke to, I suppose, a nationwide Stockholm syndrome, where Boris announced this through the press, and we all held our breaths waiting to find out if we'd be locked in our homes again for another six months. And they all breathed a sigh of relief when it turns out we've only just got to strap a bit of material to our face every time we go in a shop, uh, the efficacy of that being very dubious. Though I will say there were two things that really disturbed me in the press conference. The first one was... Uh, Chris Whitty coming out and saying, oh, the headlines are incorrect. I said that uh, I was really proud of the British public for taking lockdowns as a voluntary choice. Well, no lockdown is a voluntary choice because if businesses comply with the lockdown, if travel complies with lockdown, if you can't leave the country, can't get your hair cut, et cetera, you're locked, up, you're locked down de facto because you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything. So it's nobody's choice to sit in their homes and not get goods or services. And also, I agree with your guests in that the idea that the, the booster is going to be turned into some sort of um, vaccine deployment Netflix subscription service. When, for example, the American Congress has their sixth most popular stock is in Pfizer, and that was before this pandemic. Um, the idea that there's a lot of money to be made by this by government, I think there needs to be an investigation into that. Well, yeah, you, you say that, Connor, but also, I mean, we mustn't lose sight of the fact that this virus has been quite deadly and has been quite devastating for mm -hmm. some parts of the world and actually this country indeed. So whilst, yes, you know, there seems to be an ongoing sort of conveyor belt of vaccine, 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 it may well be that we do actually need to do something about it because it does help to prevent death, which is uh, one of the main things that we're looking at. Now, Boris also mentioned more about face masks, which you've uh, put forward. Um, and, and thankfully, it sounds like that's the main restriction. You mentioned that you didn't think that these are effective at all. Um, why is that when we know... Well, let's say... First, first of all, with vaccines, weeks 39 to 46 of the ONS's statistics show that most people above the age of 40 who have comorbidities that died from COVID are double vaccinated. And that doesn't mean the vaccine doesn't work. It just means the vaccine doesn't save everybody. So that's not something that you can predicate uh, vaccine passports on, for example, because it doesn't stop you catching COVID, it doesn't stop you getting COVID, and it doesn't stop everyone from dying from COVID. The numbers are down, but they're not completely gone. Um, yeah, second of all, the idea that face sorry, masks sorry, work sorry. excellent. Can I, I'll just stop yep. you there, because I think that we can get statistics to kind of prove this, prove that, and actually, if we put them in a different arena, you might find that the statistics come out slightly differently. I just want to um, really focus on, on what Boris's speech, on his speech though, mm. um, and I want to come back to the mask wearing. And do, do you yep. think that, that that is a good move, though, for people to be at least doing that? No, because there are currently 53 million masks at the height of the pandemic that were sent to landfill daily. Uh, they outnumber jellyfish in our oceans. They are actually sourced mostly from China, uh, mostly from sweatshops. I know Calvin himself tweeted out a video of people making these masks in the third world under slave labor conditions. And funnily enough, the actual microfibers in the masks, um, they've been... Uh, molecular yeah, physicists who've talked, talked about this are larger than the actual COVID particulate. So they, yeah. they don't do much to prevent the spread. Yeah, okay. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us.